Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in for another episode of my TIG welding how-to series, TIG welding for beginners. Today I'm gonna to show you how to TIG weld a fillet joint. Okay, so for settings for this guy, again, we're on AC current for sure. And we're gonna turn this one up a little hotter. Let's crank it up to about 225. That'll give us a little bit more heat to make sure that we lay a good smooth weld down. So again, for our gear, I'm strictly using, again, like I've said in the other videos, one eighth call it tungsten setup for everything. Uh, on this one here, I'm rocking the gas lens setup, one eighth everything inside of it with a number eight cup on top of it. As well as that, we'll be using one eighth filler rod. Okay, so our machine is up and running and we're gonna put two tacks on this guy, just on the ends. So again, with our wire brush, we're gonna wire brush lengthwise in the joint. Make sure you get all the stuff out of the weld joint. Okay, so when we weld this guy, typically what you'll do for a weld test is be welding it in the 90 degree position like this. So it'll be sitting flat on the table. Your T will be up 90 degrees to the table. But since we're learning today, and this is a tutorial for straight up beginners, we're gonna do it a little easier way. We're gonna do it like this. The reason we do it like this is because gravity's not gonna affect either side one more than the other. Gravity's gonna affect it pretty evenly because we have a leg that will go up each side, same amount. If you're welding like this, gravity's gonna pull the weld more towards the bottom side. And for the sake of learning today, let's just do it like this. Because what you're gonna be doing is focusing on keeping torch angle, pretty much 90 pointing straight down. Another little tip I like showing people is that when they set up like this, put your torch over the shorter end of the plate. If you have your plate set up like this, and your torch has to reach all the way over the plate like this. Your fingers, your wrist is gonna be dragging on this edge, which is gonna be really hot pretty quick. So flip it around so the shorter end is what's underneath your hand. That way you won't be bumping into anything. Okay, so let's get going with it here. So I'm gonna start at the end, obviously, and then I'm gonna work to be about halfway through, and then we'll cut the weld there and see how it's going. But I think you'll see, I'm gonna hit it with a lot of uh, heat and a decent amount of fill right at the start. Watch how long I hang out here, because I want the weld to be real good and real uh, wetted in before I start moving. That's the trick, because you wanna get it good off the start, because once it's good off the start, and all you have to do is babysit it and keep it consistent once you get going. If you don't have a good start, it's difficult to get the weld to sit down the way you want it to while you're already going. So watch how long I hang out at the beginning and get it, uh, get it to do what I want before I start moving. Okay, ready? Overall, that was pretty good. It was decently filled up, pretty decent amount of fill-ins. The start was pretty hot, but uh, that's okay because it was right on the edge. It's definitely gonna be the easiest part to heat up. That's why you wanna get it hot right off the start because you're heading into cold material. Okay, let's finish her up.
Okay, so as you can see with the previous weld demos we did in the last few videos, the last inch or so, I really backed off the heat. Um, if you didn't notice, watch the video again. I backed off the heat probably about 50% of what I was doing this part at. And I almost, I kept the filler rod I was adding about the same. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna back off the heat a fair bit because it's gonna get really hot at the end there. Um, and as you back off the heat, you wanna make sure that you're still giving it good fill because if you're giving it good fill with a little less heat, it won't fall flat. Overall, I think the weld went pretty good. What you're gonna be looking for, so we welded it in a position where we didn't have gravity favoring one side or the other. So what it means is if we set it in this position like so, you look lengthwise down it, your weld should be pretty centered in the joint. So it looks like the leg came up about the same amount on this side as it did on this side. So that's what you're looking for there. We don't have any areas of weld that went too far to one side. Typically with a T fillet joint, you'll have some weld that goes up one side a little further than the other side. Um, that's pretty common when you get into uh, different positions of welding and stuff like that. But for this guy, we kept it pretty flat and that stayed pretty centered, so that's good. Another thing we can do to check out uh, and see how our heat and fill ratio was is we can look at our lines like you saw in the last couple videos. This is a good way to inspect and see how much fill you've put in. So we've got a pretty good straight wetted line here, which is good. And that's continued pretty much obviously at the beginning. Like I said, we spilled out a little bit because it was hot to start, but then it went nice and straight. So that's good. And it was that way on the other side as well which is good. A lot of the time what you'll see is sometimes you'll have one side that looks really, really good and the other side will be a little bit crazy and all over the place. Sometimes typically what you'll see is that one side will be nice and smooth and straight and then the other side won't be quite so much. It'll be a little bit wobbly here and there. That's sometimes due to gravity, that's sometimes due to bad torch angle, but this is what you're looking for here. You want a good straight line, both top edge and bottom edge. I think we did an okay job at that here. Okay, I wanted to do a couple things here to show you guys an example of some pretty common mistakes with the T fillet joint. So we'll look at this first pass here. Pretty classic example of probably what is most common. The weld can be pretty good and pretty healthy looking. However, it's all on one side. Um, this one is always usually affected by gravity. So if you have a weld joint that's set up like so in a 90 degree position, gravity is gonna wanna pull it more to one side than the other. So what'll happen, if we look at it lengthwise like this, is it's all on the low side. The weld is all kind of spilled out to the bottom on the gravity side. So that's something you want to avoid because basically what's happened is that your weld has gone off center so that the weld joint that you're actually trying to hit is completely being missed. You're basically only catching it with about a third of what should be on top. Pretty common mistake, yeah, it's just uh, having too much weld on the low side. Here's another example. Obviously this one is a bit exaggerated, but basically what you can see is that you've had uneven amounts of weld put onto either face of the T-joint. So could be due to the weld being a little bit too cold where it hasn't totally spilled out and wetted right off the start like it should have but this is another one you'll want to watch out for you want to make sure that your weld line like we talked about is nice and straight because this is another pretty common one here is that you'll have some weld that's spilled out at the bottom and then an overcorrection. you'll go back up high and then spill out again so basically just want to watch out to make sure that you keep your weld centered and keep it hot enough so that it stays consistent the whole way through all right, thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed this demo on how to weld the T fillet joint. This one's a lot of fun. This one's fun because you can crank the machine up a little bit and uh, see what it's like to make a little bit bigger of a weld. So again, if you guys try this and it goes well, uh, hit me on Instagram. It's at Pacific Arc TIG Welding. Uh, send me pictures of how you did. If you have any problems or anything like that, take some pictures and send them to me. I'll try and help you out. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions of uh, other things you'd like to see, leave it in comments section below. All right, I appreciate you guys checking out these videos. Check out the rest of the demos on this channel of my how-to series. I really appreciate you watching. I hate asking, but be sure to subscribe, like, and share, do all that stuff. The more people that watch these videos, the more videos I'll make. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Have fun welding.